A lot of people in the comment section are very brutal, of course, because the internet is very mean to Steven Seagal, unfortunately. So they see certain things in the video. Uh, I see other things, but I wanted to bring in a true expert elite martial arts. Hey guys, I thought it'd be fun to do a breakdown of Steven Seagal's UFC fights. Well, that's why I titled the video, of course, because if I just put demonstration, which is more of a demonstration, I don't think that many people would click on it. It is the truth. But regardless, it is very interesting to watch, and we're going to do a breakdown on it. So the video was originally posted in July of 2012, and it looks like it took place in Brazil. Seagal does his demonstration against former light heavyweight competitor Fajau, and a guy named Ben McKelvey actually posted it. Kind of funny because it got so many views, went viral. He had commented on the uh, video he posted. I think he filmed it. I'm not sure. I think he filmed it. I'm pretty sure he's the first one who ever posted it. So he, he, and I asked him for permission if I could put it on my channel, by the way, which I did in a short video before, but now I want to do a breakdown analysis on this. But anyway, he said, uh, I wrote five fucking books and this video is my legacy. So he is a best selling author, though. Check him out, benmckelvey.com. And his story kind of sounds interesting. Best selling author Ben McKelvey turned a heart attack in his 20s into an inspiring, no fear approach to his life and a globe trotting career. Wow. I'm interested. Tell me more. So check it out, link in the description below. And as far as like the breakdown analysis, so I'm gonna play the video first and then give you the breakdown. Now, a lot of people in the comment section are very brutal, of course, because the internet is very mean to Steven Seagal, unfortunately. So they see certain things in the video. Uh, I see other things, but I wanted to bring in a true expert elite martial arts. You've probably seen him on the channel before, George S. Pogasich. I call him the martial arts wizard for good reason. And we, We'll see how he breaks it down with all the messages that he told me of what he sees because I think that is the most interesting and I want to share that with you guys. But for more George, if you want to see and learn some techniques, he does teach you how to punch way harder. He's got a punching course which I'll link in the description below. Teach me. I can do it. Check it out man because uh, you're probably going to really realize after hearing his analysis that there's a reason I call this guy the martial arts wizard. Okay, so to start, let's watch the video, try to see and understand what Seagull's really doing, and I'll share some of the comments the internet made after this clip. But yeah, just, you know, as Van Damme said in Bloodsport, keep an open mind. Okay, so comment below on some of the things that you've seen in that demonstration without trying to be funny, like legitimately seen if you're a martial artist specifically. And then I'm gonna share some things that the internet has seen, right? They're obviously always trying to poke fun and make jokes. Okay, let's see some of the comments the internet says. Steven literally whispered in his ear, play along, don't embarrass me, and I'll pay you 10K. That got 351 responses. Jeez. This guy, Seagal saves his best moves for the dinner table. Steven Seagal, the greatest slow motion fighter of all time. The hardest fight Steven ever had was with his blood sugar. <sighs> he's the world's best patty cake champ. Yeah, there's a lot of comments like that where he's like great at slapping mosquitoes or playing patty cake. Ton of comments like that. Anyway, you could kind of see the type of comments this thing's got, man. I'll do a separate video just sharing some of these comments because I mean, some of them are kind of funny and amusing. But every once in a while you'll find a positive one. So I'm going to find those and I'll, I'll, you know, I'll share them with a bunch of other ones too in a future video. But anyway, this is just giving you an idea of what the internet thinks about this video. Well, let's see what the martial arts wizard George Pogasich sees. So George says, of course you're playing like slap boxing. 
The irony here is that the kick, the front kick, was the most impressive, and he could land it at will over and over, and the guy couldn't see it. I could see from the beginning that there was a discussion between the two, and I think it may have been about offense and defense. Steven gave him instructions, and he nodded his head in agreement. And then he came back and gave him further instructions, what looked like he was telling him there wasn't going to be any takedowns, only strikes, and he was just to block him. And this makes sense as they just want to do a little exhibition and not get serious. And maybe he was asked to do that because it's something that really generates interest. Steven has really long arms compared to the other guy and is definitely much faster. You can tell that Steven's center of gravity right from the beginning is shifted back, which means he's ready to defend first and then counterattack. The other guy's center is always set to move forward. It would be really hard for him to move back the way he has his center forward. When you look at these two from the point of origin, you can already tell ahead of time what they have a tendency to do. The other guy wants to weather the storm. He's going to take whatever strikes you've got and barrel in for a takedown. He's in an awkward situation standing there trying to block and throw these slow punches. He clearly doesn't know what to do once the option of the clinch and takedown is off the table. However, I see Steven checking him at every point and there is no vulnerability exposed there for Steven. I see Steven tilting his head like he does in his movies, looking serious, and then straightens up again and reacts by smiling. This means that when he tilts his head to the side, it's to relieve stress and tension to free his muscles up to his hack and counter. Then he goes back and upright and smiles, beckoning the other guy to come at him so he can do it again. Steven Skull is a cagey fighter and will use deception, while the other guy is more like a tank and very predictable as he plods in with only one way to attack and one objective to take the man down. Steven engages the guy and then relaxes. He does this because he has to get the tension out of his arms and resets so that he can retaliate instantly if he needs to. All these strikes and hand movements are really there for misdirection and to draw the guy in. They are not hard and present themselves as what they call in boxing, the snake charmer jabbing strategy to lull their opponent into a full sense of security and to read his intentions like a radar antenna, just baiting the guy to commit himself or overcommit himself. And that's why Seagull's balance is in the back so he can move back fast if the guy comes in and to change to a different angle with his footwork to offset the guy if he tries to clinch. George further goes on and says, I can add a little more. I watched a little and gave you my assessment mostly from memory of the clip. This guy's the martial arts wizard, told you. Anyway, further, after he looked at it again, he said, Seagal showed good independence of movement with his two front kicks, where nothing moved in the body to give the move away. There were no visual cues in the upper body, therefore the other guy couldn't see it. Considering what a heavy, tall, and older guy he is, those kicks came out as nicely executed as we have ever seen him do, even in the movies. In fact, they were better looking than the ones he demonstrated while training Anderson Silva for his UFC fight. To see a full breakdown analysis on Steven Skull's front kick that he taught Leota Machida and Anderson Silva, check out the video I did with George, uh, linked in the description below. I remember being on set and on deadly ground trying to get Steven Seagal to throw a front kick. <laughs> I modified them in such a way that I think I can make my students and myself in a real fight land them and hurt people. Steven Seagal is not a fighter. I also noticed him quickly adjusting his distance when he skipped back. Personally, I'm more interested in observing his timing of engagement and how aware and alert he is to movements coming at him. His hands, technique-wise, are strategically being used as monitors of the action, like a boxer fills the opponent out with his jab. They serve as a way to fill where the opponent is, to confuse him, and to even draw him into attacking with a fully committed lunge for a takedown. Once he gets his opponent confident enough to shoot in and commit, that's when Seagal neutralizes their efforts and takes them out with a real technique. It's important to distinguish between strategy and technique. A technique is executed quickly and is meant for street applications, while a strategy takes more time to set up an opponent for a technique. What we are witnessing here is the setup, the strategy for the sake of a publicity exhibition, rather than the technique itself. At this point, we primarily have only his movies to observe his technique in its most dynamic display. By observing his movements in this short video, we can gain valuable insights into the effectiveness and dynamism of his techniques. See here where the guy gets close enough to clinch, Look how he bends his head forward to the extreme. His conditioning is to go after the legs and hips. And look at the part of Seagull's body that's the farthest away from him. Seagull's hips. And Seagull's blocking him from advancing with his head and upper body. This was just playing, but I don't think Seagull isn't prepared or thinking that a cheat shot may be possible for the press. Brilliant analysis from George S. Pogacic, the martial arts wizard. There's a reason why I asked him analyze that clip because I knew he would do it in a way that I don't think anybody else really would or could and one thing that I noticed that nobody really I don't think anyone really in the comments pointed it out and, and George didn't point this out but when Seagal steps on Fajal's foot it's not just like accidental 
Uh, he even does this when he's training in the Jesse Ancom video. This kind of thing, look at the hand again, look at the feet again. Mm. Yep. Now, in my style, I would just take this and go into, mm. you know, something like that. Right. He's basically disrupting the opponent's balance and setting up for a counter, at least in my opinion. And obviously, this is very intentional on Sigal's part. Anyway, now that you heard all of that analysis, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about Steven Seagal in that demonstration? And... Make sure to look into George Pogacic's punch course. I give it the Viking Samurai seal of approval, and I think you guys will too.